Hello, the last video introduced bootstrapping and one big application for bootstrapping or one big reason to do bootstrapping is to create confidence intervals. So we need to talk about what is a confidence interval. First, let's back up a step and think about estimating a parameter. So remember a parameter is a fixed unknown number and we're trying to use data to take a guess at what that fixed unknown number is. So we can do that in a couple ways. One way to do this is to just guess a single point to estimate our parameter. Another way is to guess an interval, and um, this will obviously cover some more um, values. So um, to give an example of an of a point estimate, let's think about the percentage of Minnesota voters who plan to vote for um, presidential candidate Joe Biden. So a point estimate would be 50.2% of Minnesota voters are likely to vote for Joe Biden. And this statistic is from um, the blog 538 as of today. Okay, so that's just a single point, 50.2%. Now let's give an interval estimate. So an interval estimate has to be an interval. So here the interval that I've chosen is 49% to 51%. So in some city somewhere, 49 to 51% of voters in that city plan to vote for Joe Biden. Okay, so those are our two types of um, estimation techniques, point estimation and interval estimation. So um, how do we actually like get to these interval estimates? So this brings us into confidence intervals. And a confidence interval is essentially just a special type of interval estimator. And we'll see what I mean by special type in a few moments here. So suppose that I say that I have a one minus alpha confidence interval for a parameter. And that confidence interval goes from A up until B. Then um, one way that we could explain what that means is we could say that we are one minus alpha, confident that the parameter lies between A and B. Okay, so a confidence level that a lot of people choose is 95%. So in other words, using alpha equals 0.05, and then that leaves one minus alpha equals 0.95 or 95%. So if the 95% confidence interval goes from 49% up to 51%, then we could say that we are 95% confident that the true proportion of voters who plan to vote for Joe Biden lies between 49% and 51%. Okay, let's um, think a little bit more about what this confidence interval thing means. These confidence intervals are constructed in such a way that if we repeatedly constructed these confidence intervals, in other words, if we repeatedly took samples from the population of size n and used the techniques that we'll talk about later to um, create our confidence intervals, then about 1 minus alpha, or perhaps 95% of intervals constructed with this technique would contain the true parameter value. So if we're creating a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of voters who plan to vote for Joe Biden, then we could say that um, if we repeatedly took samples of size n, whatever n is in our original data set, then 95% of intervals constructed in this way would contain the true proportion of voters who plan to vote for Joe Biden. So we'll get some practice with that, and this will lead us into our bootstrapping. <laughs> 